So like this rock, for example, like if you look at it, like where the placement is, is actually in front of these, in front of this, like, uh, what is this? Like, some, like stairs or uh, column, side column that supports the stairs right here. Uh, so if anything, this actually needs to just kind of like shift and move in front. And this is where I was like looking at it and I was like, oh, but if I do that, there's not enough space in order for, in order for this to maintain that boulder, you know, in that place. So what I had to do, because I see there's two, there's two pieces here. So that's where I was like, all right, well, let me just kind of like roughly block in these two and just kind of place them here just to kind of give me an idea of like where I need to put these. And then that tells me a couple of things of like, okay, then I need to either extend this out or I need to push this back. Pushing it back will help me because then that gives me two things. That lets me have the extension here that I was looking for in the, in the art. And also like it helps me kind of like just push a lot of this stuff back just a bit, just to make everything work. And then I can go ahead and, you know, take this portion and maybe extend it out. <clears throat> so now you get a you get a better you get a better feel and a better like representation of like okay now I know kind of like how these two kind of fit with each other. <clears throat> there comes a point where a time and a point where sometimes you might have to break off from the concept art just to kind of make things work for your for your environment, right? It's it's something that happens all the time at work. Like I get a concept art and you get a previous model, but then like when you start modeling, when you just start doing the final model, sometimes we come across problems where it's like, oh, actually if I model these steps exactly this size, it won't work. Like my, my character, the, the, the steps probably might be too small or too big, or, you know, if I, there might be too many where the art director like just doesn't like it, it makes it more noisier uh, for the for the shot. So they sometimes reduce it by increasing the step size or they'll move things, and again, it's all common. It, it happens all the time. Like you'll notice, <clears throat> being an environment modeler, you just have to be. The biggest thing is to have patience and you know expect change because it's going to happen all the time. Because you never know, like, um, just what might be changed or what the art director or you know maybe today they like it and tomorrow they hate it. You know, those are some things that I've I've come across a lot. Um, other things to consider is like. This right here, this is the one that I was kind of, kind of questioning because I was like, it feels like it's, it's right next to it, but I feel like maybe we can play around with, maybe it's floating on a separate little island next, you know, off over here. Okay. And uh, maybe that way you can get the, that depth, but also increase the size of this to make it a little bit larger and make it feel, you know, like it has a little bit of uh, depth and, and shape. Um, and then also you can experiment with adding and placing these kind of like floating rocks over here, kind of like what you have over on this side. Mm -hmm. Since the artist doesn't really depict what's on this side, this is all open to interpretation from you, you know? So this is where like you get a little bit of creative freedom, uh, as a, as an artist, you know, to, to kind of like block in and kind of figure out, resolve these kind of areas that are unknown. We call these like the unknown areas especially if you want like a, a, a turntable of it and you know, definitely it's, it's useful.